Hey, congratulations, you got a book deal from a publisher, you're really excited, but I'm here to tell you that there are some major car crashes that can happen in publishing and you need to know what they are and how to avoid them. I'm Harry Bingham from Jericho Writers and let's jump straight in. Okay, and car crash number one is a hideous one. It's a wreck piled on top of a wreck. It's you give money to a vanity publisher. And it's a wreck piled on top of a wreck because not only have you just given your money to these people, but they're not going to market your book. And in fact, it's a wreck on top of a wreck on top of a wreck because you're going to feel really stupid as well. Okay, and the thing you need to realize is that publishers make money from selling books to readers. Okay, a vanity publisher isn't really a publisher at all because they make their money by selling publishing services to authors. Now, don't get me wrong, these guys aren't doing anything illegal and what they're doing will produce a book. You will end up with a book in your hands that's got a cover and you know it, it looks like a completely regular book. But it's not gonna sell. And you're gonna say, well, hey, these guys are off, you know, asking me for $2,000 or $5,000 or 10, $15,000 or even more. And there's this whole package of services I get. I get an author press pack. I get a press release. I get adverts in this or that journal. Um, I, I get all of these other tools. And I'm here to tell you that those things will not help to market your book. And what you need to, if somebody's asking you for money, ask them directly, how, what is the median sales of your median title? So they'll want to tell you about their top selling title. You don't want to know that. You want to know what the average, the median book sells. And, and you'll be shocked by how few that number is. And those publishers will be very reluctant to tell you what the number is. Remember, they're not going to call themselves vanity publishers, they're going to call themselves author-supported publishers or uh, partnership publishers or hybrid publishers. They're going to use any name at all other than vanity publishers, but vanity publishers is what they are and you need to avoid them by a thousand miles, okay? That's publishing car crash number one. Car crash number two is a little bit different and it's slightly controversial this one in a funny way. You submit direct to big five type publishers. You think, well, hold on, what can be wrong with submitting direct to a really reputable publisher? And we're talking about the likes of HarperCollins and Penguin Random House and people like that. And the, the trouble is that those guys aren't really set up to take submissions direct from authors. Not for the, I mean, for niche uh, subject-led non-fiction like How to Prune Roses, maybe, but, but for the, the big sort of front of bookstore books, the, the novels, the mainstream non-fiction, the, the kids' fiction, those things they expect to be dealing with literary agents. If you just send your work in direct, yeah, somebody's going to read it and I'm just going to throw it away. But it is, your work would probably end up two months later on the desk of an intern whose job is to clear that pile as quickly as she can. Okay, and you don't want to be that. Um, because even if, I mean, first of all, that's a really bad route into a firm. But even if you end up being given an offer by that firm, you're going to be thinking, hold on, is this the best offer I could get? Is this contract fair? Um, should I be with a different editor at a different house? I have no idea. I'm a newbie to this industry. And that's why you need to have a literary agent. Yes, you have to pay the agent a 15% commission, but don't think of it in terms of costs. Well, you should think of it in, in terms of what that agent can deliver for you. And they should be able to multiply your income by several fold over what you could achieve yourself. And they're going to do that because they've got a huge Rolodex of contacts in the industry. So when they read your book, first of all, they're going to help you get it into shape. Then they're going to think how best to present it to the industry. And then, crucially, they're going to think which editor at which imprint of which firm is right for this book. And they know the answers to that question and you don't. So going direct to a big five publisher sounds like a sensible thing to do, but I promise you it really, really isn't. That brings us to car crash number three. You've done the right thing. You've got an agent. When Car Crash 3 comes in two different flavours. There's Car Crash 3A, the slow freeze. You give your material to an agent, they take you on, either formally or informally, and then, bit by bit, you seem to be put in the deep freeze. And typically what happens here is that an agent takes on your book with a flurry of genuine good intentions and enthusiasm, but you get further down the editorial process or, or perhaps sort of, you know, the preparing for sale process, the agent starts to think, hey, is this really good? Or was I a bit overzealous at the start? And what they ought to do is just pick up the phone, send you an email and say, look, I'm really sorry. I think I may have called this one wrong. I've slightly changed my mind on it. I'm not sure this is uh, a book I can work on with you. Um, 
but a lot of agents don't take that professional route and what happens is they end up just not responding to your phone calls to your emails and you know you shouldn't over pester these are these are busy people but but if if you know weeks go by and you are pretty confident that this person is no longer responding to you then basically you don't have an agent and you simply need to move on you don't want to try reheating what is basically cold and and never going to be uh, warmed up again that's the one version of the car crash version 3b of the same basic car crash is where the agent stops responding to you for the same reasons flurry of good intentions called it wrong they're getting cold feet they haven't told you so in a professional way but then as you nudge and nudge with your final nudge they will explode back at you in a kind of flurry of, of emotion saying how can I work with such an impossible author and you're gonna uh, you know find your head spinning a little bit and think well, what did I do wrong and the answer is you did nothing wrong it's the agent who did something wrong but again don't try and repair that relationship you can't repair it just move on and that brings us on to our next publishing car crash car crash number four you get a publisher hooray and the publishing is just terrible okay and bear in mind that when you sell a book you are selling a book it's no longer your intellectual property you've you've made the sale it's not yet yeah, it's going to be your name on the cover but the publisher owns it that's that's the nature of the deal that you've struck with them and yes you should be active and involved in the publication process as much as you can a good publisher will want to engage you uh, in that process but the fact is if the wrong cover is on the book or the approach to uh, retail buyers is is wrong uh, or if the marketing is wrong or if the thing is wrong on amazon th the book can simply fail for no fault of your own and i'll talk a little bit about how to protect yourself and indeed let me give you a car crash avoidance guide how do you protect yourself when the bad stuff happens Okay, and I should say up front, you can't completely protect yourself. The fact is this is a difficult industry and authors are not the most powerful people within the industry, rather kind of unexpectedly. Um, and so if you're going that kind of traditional route rather than an indie route, where obviously you control everything, but if you are gonna engage with traditional publishers, the fact is you are out of control or out of big chunks of, of your career and car crashes will sometimes happen even if you uh, protect yourself as best you can. But for what it's worth, here's a survival guide. Never give money to a vanity publisher. Remember, they're not gonna call themselves vanity publisher, but if they're asking you for money, that's what they are. Use literary agents for mainstream fiction and nonfiction. If, if your title is capable of selling a lot, use a literary agent and you'll be in good hands with them. If an agent turns bad, turns sour on you, abandon that agent fast. You don't really have an agent at all and be as active in the publishing process as you can and be informed especially in relation to things like you know what what price is your publisher intending to publish your book on at amazon if they're going to put a 12 dollar price tag on an ebook you know that that book isn't going to sell very much it's worth establishing right up front what their before you even sign the contract what their intentions are because if you you know your most powerful point in the whole publishing cycle is before you sign the contract that's when they're eager to, to rake you on board so being active and engaged and informed as an author is really really crucial to you but there's one more thing that i want to tell you as well and this is really important my number one killer tip for a successful long-term author career is build an email list okay basically make friends with your readers get to know who they are have their contact details and then you know what even if book one doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to you will have made some sales you'll have got some readers and you'll collect some of those readers will be enthused enough by your work that they will have responded to the uh, reader magnet that you're going to put in your ebook and they will sign up to your mailing list and then your book two you can use that little kernel of readers to support the launch of book two you get more sales you get more readers your email list will expand and you've already got the an asset that you can grow into something really substantial and that email list has the potential to support your future career as an author and that's certainly 100 percent true if you're an indie author but it's almost equally true if you're a trad author because if you're a trad author people are still buying books on amazon people are still going to respond to those emails and and as i say it's an asset that will endure throughout your entire career and it's the number one thing that you should do okay i hope that's been really really helpful and i want to say that you know one of the themes of this video has been active be, be engaged, be informed, and we've got some great tools um, to help you do that. If you're about to approach literary agents, we've got some great tools for 
um, creating your agent submission pack, synopsis and query letter. Um, those are free from the link below. Uh, if you're thinking of going in an indie direction, then we've got some great tools for that as well. All the slides from this uh, video are also available. They're free, they're from the link below. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Harry Bingham from Jericho Writers. It's been a pleasure.